we appreciate you. Thank God for your lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, are you ready for the word? Uh, please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. Glory be to God. And to all of you watching from all over the world, we want to encourage you to share this live link with someone so that they can watch with you. And as you do that, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. I read, it says, and he said, please show me your glory. Hallelujah. And he said, please show me your glory. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm continuing with my message that I have titled, Show Me Your Glory. And this is part four. Show me your glory. And this is part four. Every believer must desire to experience the glory of God in an unusual way. Because we were made in the glory of God. We were made in the glory of God. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26, God says, let us make man in our own image. That word in our own image and in our own likeness there means the glory of God. Because one thing God doesn't share with no man is his glory. That's why uh, the devil's number one desire is to steal God's glory. The devil wanted the glory of God. And so God doesn't share his glory with no man. So when God made man in his glory, when man, when Adam came to the garden in the cool of the day and he's talking with God, or God comes down in the cool of the day and he's talking to God, they were like identical twins. The animals could not distinguish between Adam and God. You can attest to the fact that there are some identical twins. Even some parents cannot identify them. They are so identical that even the mother and the father don't know who is, the, who is uh, A or who is B. Are you following what I'm saying? So that's how God made man. God made man in his own image to reflect his glory here on earth. But when man fell, then what happened was that man lost that glory. That's why Romans say, For all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. So that means sin robbed us from operating in the glory. But when Jesus Christ came, Jesus came to restore back the glory of God that was lost in the garden unto us. Are you following me? So quick question we want to ask is what is the glory of God? What is the glory of God? The glory of God is the splendor and the majesty of God. The glory of God is the splendor and the majesty of God. What is the glory of God? The glory of God is the manifest presence of the fullness of God. The manifest presence of the fullness of God. So that means when the glory of God shows up, God himself comes down. He manifests his fullness to you. Number three, what is the glory of God? The glory of God is the weight of God. The glory of God is the weight of God. That's why First Chronicles chapter 3 from verse 15 tells us that when the ministers and the choir and the instrumentalists were all of one accord, the glory of God came down. When the glory of God came down, the Bible says that and the priest could not stand to minister 
because every time the glory of God shows up, he comes with his weight. The glory of God is the kabod of God, is the weight of God. First or second Chronicles chapter 3 from verse 13 to 15. Are you following me? So whenever the glory of God comes down, the glory of God shows his majesty. Hallelujah. That's why in this season, your number one prayer must be, Lord, show me your glory. Hallelujah. Listen, the glory of God is so precious to God such that he does not share his glory with anyone. God does not share his glory with anyone. God shares everything, but as for his glory, he doesn't share it with anyone. So when we begin to operate in the glory of God, no weapon of the enemy formed or fashioned against you shall prosper because the glory of God protects you. I showed you how when you are in the glory, nothing can penetrate the glory. Philip asked Jesus to show them the Father just as Moses asked God to show him his glory. So in John chapter 14, from verse 6 to 11, the Bible says that Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. I want you to pay attention to what Jesus is saying. Philip asked Jesus, show us the Father. But Jesus is going to show them something very significant that was in front of them. But all this while, they did not know that Jesus was the glory of God in their midst. That's why John chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible says that, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Bible in other translations says, And the glory became fleshed and moved into the neighborhood. So Jesus is the glory of God. So every time you see Jesus, you've seen the glory. Remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, the glory of God overshadowed Jesus. And the voice of heaven came and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So in John chapter 14, verse 7, Jesus said to Philip, if you had known me, you would have known the father. And from now on, you will will know him and have seen him. Now, follow what Jesus is saying. Now, God says, no one can see me and live. But Jesus is telling Philip, from now onwards, you would have known, you, you, will, you will know him, and I am the one. You have seen God. And Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. Show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you? Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me? Now listen carefully. Philip is telling Jesus, show me the Father. And Jesus is telling Philip, have I been with you so long and you have not known me? So Jesus, when he was here on earth, he manifested the glory of God. Sometimes what you need can be right in front of you. And it takes the spirit of discernment to know what you desire is right by you. So Jesus said, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me? Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? So God was in Christ right there. The glory manifested fully. But Philip could not see the glory. Are you following me? So Jesus said, 
Do you not believe that I am the Father? Philip, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Oh, this is powerful. Jesus is telling Philip, do you not believe that I, Jesus, who is standing in front of you, I am in the Father and the Father is in me? <laughs> that is one flesh right there. Take, take, let's say, a vinto, vinto drink, a squash, and pour it in water. You won't be able to separate the vinto squash from the water. They become one. That's what Jesus is saying to Philip. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Mm. But the Father who dwells in me does the work. Verse 11, finally, Jesus said to him, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So just as Moses asked God, Lord, show me your glory, Philip is also asking here, Jesus, show me the Father. Jesus is saying, I am that father you're looking for. I am that glory you're looking for. Don't look far. You don't have to go far. I am here right in front of you. Write this down. No one can see or experience the glory of God except they are born again. This is very important. No one can see or experience the glory of God except they are born again. So therefore, to be part of the kingdom of God and to see the glory of God, you must first be born again. You must first be born again. John chapter 3 from verse 3 to 6. John chapter 3 from verse 3 to 6. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, or most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? This is an intellectual asking Jesus this question. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, listen, for God to show you his glory, number one requirement is you have to be born again. If you're not born again, God will not give you the eyes to be able to behold his glory. Are you following me? Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4, Nicodemus asked him, how can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? As, as we've, we've already said that. You know, so Jesus said to him, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So these requirements are so critical for you to access the glory of God. To be, to be able to access the glory of God, you have to be born of water and of the spirit. For that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit, Jesus said in verse 6. So you have to be born again. You have to be born again. You have to be born again. During the service towards the end, I'll give you an opportunity to be born again. I'll give you an opportunity to give your life to God. I'll give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ 
so that you can experience the glory of God. Once you become born again, then you are ready to experience the fullness of the glory of God. Once you are born again, then you are ready to experience the fullness of the glory of God. Listen, once saved, we operate in the same level of glory Jesus operated on when he was operated in when he was here on earth. Did you get that? Once you become born again, you and I operate in the same level of glory Jesus operated in whilst he was here on earth. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Same glory. Same level of glory. Romans 8 11 says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells where? In you. Same spirit. Right? Not a different spirit. Same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwells in you. That means same glory. The same glory. Same glory dwells where? In you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So, you see, once you get born again, the same glory that operated in Jesus begins to operate in you. That's why John chapter 17 from verse 22 to 24, listen carefully to Jesus' prayer. John chapter 17 from verse 22 to 24. I wanted to note this carefully because this is very important. When Jesus was about to depart, look at his prayer for us. His prayer to God for us. Listen, he said, and this, the glory which you, God, have given me, have I given them that they may be one just as we are one. <laughs> Let's stay there for a few minutes. Jesus prayed that the glory which you, God, have given me, I have given them. So, like Romans 8, 11 says, it's the same spirit. It's the same glory. Jesus said, the glory which you have given me, I have given them. Now, there is no way Jesus will ever give us a lesser glory than what God gave him. There is absolutely no way. There is absolutely no way. That's why John 14, 12 says, Jesus' desire for us, as a matter of fact, is to do greater works than he did. Are you following me? So, in essence, Jesus actually did not give us the same level of glory. He gave us a greater dimension of glory. So, John 17, 22, Jesus said, And the glory which you, my Father, gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. So that means you and I are operating in the same level of glory Jesus operated on whilst here on earth. Same glory. Same glory. The same glory that resurrected the dead is operating in you. The reason why you haven't recognized that the same glory is operating in you is because you haven't exercised it. Are you following me? Look at verse 23. Jesus said, I in them. What did we see earlier? We saw when Philip asked Jesus to show us, to show him the Father. Jesus said to Philip, I am in the Father. And the Father is in me. Now look carefully in John 17, 23. Jesus said, I in them. So Jesus is in you. Amen. Same as God is in him. Amen. Amen. He said, I in them and you in me. The you there is God. 
I there is Jesus. I in them. The them there is you. Jesus said, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Hallelujah. And uh, Jesus said, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you have loved me before the foundations of the earth. Last verse, verse 24. The Bible says, verse 24, it says, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, listen, you are operating in the same glory. I've come to announce to you a solution that we are now in the season of the glory of Amen. God. Amen. Say a good amen to amen. that. We are now in the same in the same level of glory Jesus operated in Amen. and over and above in Jesus' name. Listen, there are different levels of glory. There are different levels of glory. And I want to briefly, with the time that I have, show you the different levels of glory that you can operate in. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It says, But we all, with open or an unveiled face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, and we are being transformed. Look at what transforms us. The glory of the Lord uh, transforms us into the same image. Mm. You see, that's why I keep telling you, you are operating in the same level of glory. You don't have a lesser glory. When the glory of God comes, he transforms you into the same image. The same image. And he doesn't end there. He takes you from glory to glory. As the spirit of the Lord. By the spirit of the Lord. And so it says, but we all with an unveiled face. Beholding us in a mirror. The glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Notice that, underline that word, we are being changed into what? The same image. Same image. Very important. We are transformed into the same image. We are metamorphosed into the same image. So that means we, have, we become just like God here on earth. Jesus said, has it not been written in your laws that ye are gods? So quick question we want to ask is, what are the four levels of the glory that we are looking at? What are the four levels of the glory of God? Number one is the glory of Solomon. Number one is the glory of Solomon. Number two is the glory of lilies. Number two is the glory of lilies. Number three is the glory of Adam. See, Adam operated in the same glory, just as God in the Garden of Eden. Number three is the glory of Adam. Number four is the glory, or the greater glory, which, which is the glory of Jesus. Number three, sorry, number four is the greater glory, which is the glory of Jesus. So let's look at them step by step. So number one, I said, is what? The glory of Solomon. So turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 10, from verse 4 to 7, and let's go and look at the glory of Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 10, 
from verse 4 to 7. I read, it says, And when the queen of Sheba had seen all of Solomon's wisdom, and the house that he had built, and the food that is on the table, the sitting of his servants, the service of his waiters, and their apparel, and his cup bearers, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes. What did she see? She saw glory. I saw with my own eyes, and indeed half was not told me, your wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame of which I had. So, you see, when the queen of Sheba came, she saw the glory of Solomon. And every time the glory of God is operating in your life, it reflects in everything that is around you. It reflects in your settings. There is order. It reflects in the way you even dress. It reflects in your children. It reflects in your house. It reflects in your business. It reflects in the house of God. There is absolutely no way the glory of God is present and it doesn't reflect externally. You remember when Moses went to the mount for 40 days and 40 nights and Mount Sinai and he had an encounter with God, with the glory of God. When he came down, the Bible says that the people could not behold his face because the glory that was inside began to reflect outside. So Moses now has to use a veil to cover his face before he could talk to the people. When he goes to God, he takes off the veil. When he comes to go, the people and he's talking to the people, he has to use the veil. But when he goes to God and he's talking to God, he takes off the veil and talks to God face to face, mouth to mouth, because God and Moses were operating on the same level of glory. But when he comes to men, his people, they were not on the same level of glory. So he had to use something to cover his glory, to cover his face before they could talk. Now, what am I saying? What I'm saying is that when the glory of God is upon you, it reflects on you. The glory of God cannot be in you and not reflect on your surrounding. Everything you do reflects the glory. And I pray for you today that in the name of Jesus, the glory of God will be evident in your life in the name of Jesus. Somebody is watching right now. Your marriage is in a, in, in a crisis, but I speak the glory of God upon that marriage. Somebody is watching right now. Your business has come to a standstill. I release the glory of God upon that business. And when the glory of God comes upon that business, that business begins to move at the speed of light. There is a ministry connected right now watching. Your ministry has come to an end. But right now, I release the glory of God upon that ministry. That will move the ministry to another level in the name of Jesus. The glory of God drew multitudes from around the world to come and seek the wisdom that was in that was in Solomon. May it be so in your life. May nations come and draw from the wisdom that God has placed in you. From today, I decree over you that great men and great women are coming from everywhere around the world to come and seek practical solutions from you. Number two is that we're talking about the four levels of the glory. Number two is the glory of lilies. Number two is the glory of lilies. Luke chapter 12, verse 27 to 28. The glory of lilies. Luke chapter 12, from verse 27 
to 28. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Jesus said, Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is cast or thrown into the oven, how much more will he not clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now I want you to notice something carefully that Jesus said in verse 27, that Solomon in all his glory, Jesus said, the lilies of the field, their glory is greater than that of Solomon. I want you to follow what God is doing and what God is saying. God is saying that Solomon in all his wisdom, in all his glory that he displayed in wealth, the Bible says that Solomon made gold like dust in Israel. That was what the glory of God was able to produce. The glory of God was so strong upon Solomon that Solomon had the wisdom and the ability to make gold as dust on the earth. Are you following me? Are you following me? Very important. This is very important. And Jesus is saying, consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So that should tell you that the glory of the lilies were greater than the glory of Solomon. The third level of glory we're going to look at is the glory of Adam. The glory of Adam. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 to 9. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 7 to 9. The Bible says that, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being or a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Aden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord made, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant in the side and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now I want you to notice something very important in verse 7. The Bible says that, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and look at what he did. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Now, what did God breathe into Adam? His glory. God breathed his glory into Adam. So, when Adam woke up, the first thing he started doing was started operating in the glory. That's why Adam could fly. Adam was not limited by time, just like God. Adam was not limited by uh any law, any natural law operating on the earth. Adam defied gravity. He could fly into the air and name all the birds. Adam went under the sea and under all the rivers and named all the fishes. Without using something to breathe, he could operate underwater. He could operate on the earth. Adam was operating just like God because he was operating in the same level of glory just as God. But look at, look at something that happened. But the moment they came out of the covering of the glory of God, toiling was introduced. Genesis 3, 7 to 8. The Bible says that in the eyes of both of them were open. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So the moment sin came in, Adam and Eve lost the glory. 
I pray that you will not lose the glory in the name of Jesus. Finally, last but not the least, we want to look at the greater glory, which is the glory of Jesus. The greater glory, which is the glory of Jesus. Haggai chapter 2 verse 9. Haggai chapter 2 verse 9. It says, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give my peace, saith the Lord of hosts. So we are in the season of the greater glory. Luke chapter 11 verse 31. Luke chapter 11 verse 31. Listen carefully to what Jesus is saying. Jesus, the queen of the south, talking about the queen of Sheba, shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. Say amen to that. Amen. A greater than Solomon is here. So the moment Jesus showed up, his glory was greater than that of the lilies, that of Adam, and that of Solomon. So Jesus is saying that a greater than Solomon is here. That is a greater glory. And the moment Jesus comes into you, guess what? You begin to operate in that same dimension. Of greater glory. Finally, as we get ready to close, the greater one lives in you. First John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, You have got little children and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Did you see that? Greater is he. That is in you than he that is in the world. So the moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, a greater one comes to live in you. And my prayer for you is that you will operate in the greater dimension of the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And listen, if the greater one lives in you, no weapon of the enemy formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. Amen. In this season, you will see the glory of God. Amen. You will experience the glory of God. You will encounter the glory of God in an unusual dimension in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, before we close, I'd like to lead you to Christ. You're watching. You haven't given your life to Jesus. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior. You said, Pastor, I want to experience this glory that you're talking about. It comes through giving your life to Jesus. So say with me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I come to you just as I am. I as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. From today, I have decided to follow you. No turning back. No turning back. In Jesus' name. Well, if you pray that prayer, I want you to know that today you are born again. Father, we thank you for these precious souls that have given their lives to you. Help them. Strengthen them. Let them stay connected till Jesus appears. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Why don't we just take a minute just to pray? Ask God to show you his glory. Ask God to show you his glory. Ask God, Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory, Lord. Show me your glory, Lord. Ask God, show me your glory. Lord, show me your glory. I've had enough of a life of no glory. I want to see your glory. Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Ask God to show you his glory. 
Lord, show me your glory. Lord, show me your glory. I want to have an encounter with your glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you today. Thank you for your presence. Do a new thing in our lives. Show us your glory, Lord. We want to experience your glory in in an unusual dimension. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that you are a solution to the nations. We love you. God bless you. Have a glorious, glorious day in Jesus' name. Amen.